Okay. But before we do the derivation of the AD curve, there's certain things that you need to know, and I quickly want to look at what are those basic things you need to know. The first thing is when you deal with the financial market is to know what happens in this market when there's a change in the real money supply. Now that this model is now sort of given in terms of the real money supply and the real demand for money. Then you're going to work with the goods market where you're going to look at what is the impact of a change in the interest rate on the goods market. And then lastly, you need to know what happens in your ISLM model when there's a change in the real money supply. Now let's start with the financial market. And what we know is that if there's an increase in the real money supply, then this curve shifts to the right and you end up with a lower interest rate. Now if you look at the concept of the real money supply, which is M over P, your real money supply can increase for two reasons. The one is there can be an increase in the nominal money supply, given that the price level is the same. So what happens then, if there's an increase in the nominal money supply, you eventually end up with a lower interest rate. There is your lower interest rate. The other reason why your real money supply can increase is if you have a decrease in the price level. Now you can think of it in this way. If you have a hundred francs in your pocket, and the price of a loaf of bread is 10 rands. That means you can buy 10 loaves of bread in real terms. That this is what you can afford to buy, these 10 loaves of bread. Now, if the price decreases to 5 rands for a loaf of bread, that means you can, with that given amount of money, you can now buy 20 loaves. So, in, in a sense, you have more money now. Well, not in a sense, you do have more money in real terms. Your transaction still only says you want to buy 10 loaves of bread. So you find yourself with excess money. There's an excess supply of money. So all financial participants, when there's a decrease in the price level, find that they are holding more money than they wish. And what they will then do is they will buy bonds, which increases the price of bonds and eventually you get this decrease in the interest rate. And this is then represented by your rightward shift of your real money supply curve. Now, as the interest rate drops, you then go into the goods market. And we know if your interest rate drops in the, in the economy, you're going to find the increase in investment. So in your goods market, where we know the demand for goods determines output, and demand for goods is C plus I plus G, a decrease in the interest rate will increase investment spending. Your curve shifts upwards and you have this increase in output. So this is what happens in your financial and your goods market. Now as you know the ISLM model represents this financial and this goods market. So what happens in this model when there's a decrease in the price level? Then we will say there's an increase in the real money supply which then leads to a lower interest rate, which then leads to an increase in investment, increase in demand, and an increase in output. Now this is represented as a rightward shift of the LM curve. And as you can see, as the LM curve shifts to the right, you have a decrease in the interest rate. And as the interest rate decreases, you move along the IS curve until you reach this higher level of output.